I remember an incident from my research lab where we were experimenting on accelerated drug stability studies and my professor guided us and said that when you put a drug molecule in adverse conditions and we measure how fast it is deteriorating that's how you can actually measure its expiry date so acceleration always leads to expiry but in case of career it's reverse acceleration leads to growth okay so this is where career is a unique thing it's a plant which grows the more water you water you put in the more manure more fertilizer you put in so today's video is that manure that fertilizer which will accelerate your career it will help you take off now before i get started you have to remember this that a jumbo jet requires a longer run if your career has to be a jumbo jet career then you require a longer runway and that is where more investments will be required into your career than a general person for example uh, a person who is just 12th pass he can kick start his career by you know doing some manual labor but a person who wants to uh, use his brain and do some uh, you know breakthrough research in the future then he has to learn a lot he has to invest a lot in his Uh, career in learning right so that's something you have to keep in mind now having said that today's topic is going to be accelerate your biotech career in research now first and foremost thing is why do you need to why do you need to accelerate your career you can just be normal and be happy yeah you know you can be in the monk mode like a gautam buddha mode and you don't need to grow all right that's perfectly fine if that is the case then you don't need to watch this video probably you can watch said some gautam buddha buddha video but to talk about career in research here is something which i want to tell you by accelerating your career you are doing two benefits the first is to yourself and the second is to the society because the more research you do it benefits the society right whether it it is a uh, research in drug uh, discovery whether it is a, a digi- uh, discovery in uh, uh, research in the immunology or uh, plant sciences agricultural biotechnology anything ai ml in biotech so all that so whatever you do it is going to benefit the society only so these are the two things which i wanted to highlight here it will definitely lead to more job security and growth opportunities for you but at the same time it will help you contribute in a meaningful way to the field as a well society for example you see hargobind khurana he didn't just grow himself he also contributed a lot to the field watson or and crick or uh, mendel so whatever way they they the research they did no matter whatever benefit they got the more than the, them the society got the benefit so that's a very satisfying thing and that's why you must watch this video till the end and you must try to accelerate your career now having said that the second thing which i am here to tell you is essential skills so okay if i want to grow my career in research what are the essential skill set i will need right so the first thing here to note down is there are certain things uh, which is like imperative you can't replace it the first is critical thinking skills and problem solving skills you see for example in the theoretically something is possible but when you go to practical it doesn't happen it doesn't materialize and that is where critical thinking is very much required that's the first point and problem solving so you should be able to connect the dots and understand okay if this is not working this is how we have to do it so basically it ranges from holding the instrument to handling the instrument to data interpretation to uh, you know in inter- interfering and making sure that uh, the right experiment uh, conditions are met so that's where critical thinking and problem solving skills comes into picture the second one which i have for you is attention to detail and accuracy because if data is wrong you're done i know a person he was doing his phd in ccmb at the 7th year he had to leave, leave it so till 7th year he could not do it and uh, after leaving he analyzed he realized that his data was wrong which he collected in third year and because of that all the research work went south it was wrong so data is very important attention to detail and accuracy is very very important the third is ability to work independently as well as in team so sometimes you will be working independently collecting samples going uh, in the field and sometimes you could be working collaboratively like a team of 10 or 7 people who are working for a common goal so that's a very important skill especially in the industry because they don't want to work with someone who who is a loner who will work alone because industry is nothing but a 
culmination a combination of multiple people and their skills so that is where you need to be a team player and having said that the moment i say team player then you of course you need communication if you don't have efficient communication if you're not able to use the right terminology and right way of communicating you will not be able to get the results for example i i measured 40 ml and i uh, communicated it in the wrong way as 40 liters so obviously that's a huge difference right so 40 nanogram becomes milligram that's a huge problem so communication and presentation skills again presentation skills is something which is very important because whenever you want to convince your uh, senior or superior for project funding you have to present it in such a convincing way that they will be convinced and they will buy your thought and fund your project so yeah presentation skills is very important next is bioinformatics skill this is becoming more imperative more important nowadays because bioinformatics can help scale the data help uh, analyze the data and come to conclusions in the dry lab itself so you save a lot of reagents and chemicals and investment in the wet lab so that is where dry uh, bioinformatics skills is very important that's something which you should learn if you don't have it now, the, apart from that, there can be programming skills, coding skills, which you uh, are interested in, which you can do. Then comes the advanced R&D technique skills. So it's not just basic R&D, like, okay, uh, basic animal cell culture. No, that's not. You have to go to a level where you can, uh, you are doing advanced level um, R&D. Uh, and that is where advanced level R&D techniques is required. And we had recently done in January of this year, advanced R&D techniques, all-in-one R&D techniques internship. If you want, you can always go for that recording of that. Otherwise, you can always do hands-on also at Biotechnica. So that, these are the essential skills which you require. But apart from that, there's much more which you will need. And that is now the steps. So let me outline the steps which you will require. The first step is obviously the professional development. So when you are working in a company, you need to make sure that you are a lifelong learner. And that means you have to pursue advanced degrees and certification you know, I know a person, so she's in a biotech company, she's in Hyderabad and she buys almost every, she enrolls in almost every certification course every weekend and finishes it in three to five days and then comes back with a certificate. So what she does is she learns, right? Uh, pursuing advanced uh, degrees and certifications, diplomas and um, skill set which will help you. The second one is attending conferences and workshops like Biotechnica conducts a lot of workshops so you can attend that. So it can be a wet lab or dry lab. The more you listen, the more you immerse yourself into the uh, gravy of research, the more uh, valuable you become. It's like uh, if you have seen a pickle, right? The pickle has got a peculiar taste because it is immersed in that pickle sauce. The same way here, the more you immerse yourself into conferences and workshops, the better you become. The third is networking with industry professionals. Now, let me give you an example. So if I want to dial the CEO of a biotech company in Bangalore, I can I have their phone numbers, I can straight away talk to them and whatever I want, I can request them and they can do it for me. The same way they can do for me. It's like if uh, they need my help, they can just, I'm just one click away, they ping me in WhatsApp and we can get the job done. So how it is working. So I am able to mutually benefit uh, both sides, right? The same thing, the more networking you do, the more you stay in research, the more networking you do, you will grow professionally. So that's the first step to grow and accelerate your career. The second step here is reputation management, which is, you see, reputation is not just... Uh, um, like okay uh, you have how many papers you have published and how many uh, patents you have that's okay but apart from that you also need to consistently deliver quality work so your your work should speak for yourself not you right the second is developing a strong public patent record publication and patent record that's the point which i made just now that yeah publishing papers is one such thing but you should be able to deliver quality work to your bosses to your uh, team each time they need it and that is something which is very much required another thing is you should be the you know superhero of your team so when you are working in a biotech company you should be the superheroes like when people get stuck in their experiment they should go to you to ask where am i going wrong tell me so that kind of a superhero you have to become for that you have to read a lot of research papers you have to read a lot of journals and keep your knowledge up to date the third one is presenting at conferences and seminars. Now that establishes you as a strong uh, researcher because 
when pe- 100 people are coming to listen to you automatically your colleagues are also you know intrigued because they're looking at the way you're growing and professionally and personally and that will be obviously noticed by your boss and that will help you in promotions so that is where reputation management is very crucial the third most important is see any particular role will automatically lead to leadership so if you started as a scientist automatically one day you're going to be a chief scientific officer that's a leadership role so leadership is something which you will have to embrace from day one of your career okay and that is where you should start mentoring your junior colleagues and helping them leading projects and team and volunteering for the uh, projects and team and developing strategic plans for research and development wherein you come up with out of the box solutions which are definitely not there you know one of the emails which i received uh, a person says that said that uh, sir, you are very futuristic and um, uh, how can you do this? How do you do this? So I, my reply was, I always volunteer for uh, the future technology which is coming into the biotech sector and I go ahead and make sure that I help that person. So when we take up the leadership role, that's how we grow. So these are the three steps which I wanted to outline. First is professional development. Second is uh, reputation management. And the third is taking up leadership role even though nobody has assigned you that, right? So th- these are the three steps. Now let's look at further other aspects of accelerating your career and that is challenges so you will face a lot of challenges the first is you have to know this the job market is highly competitive so you cannot just you know walk in and start doing stuff and people will notice you you have to really step up the uh, the pedal on the, the step on the fuel the pedal so that you can accelerate see I cannot just come in and do it for you. I can advise you, I can mentor you, I can show you the path, but you got to walk on this path. So that is where the job market is highly competitive. The second one is rapidly evolving technologies and techniques of research. So uh, what used to be there then, now it's going to be replaced. AI is coming, machine learning is coming, a newer ways, a new softwares are coming in, bioinformatics. If you are not updating your knowledge, that is where you become outdated and you, Anybody who is outdated will be eventually replaced by the industry. And that is something you have to imbibe in your mind. The the third one is regulatory hurdles and compliance issues. This can actually become a roadblock when you are doing a project which is debatable, which government doesn't want or government uh, will come in and say, shut it down, right? So that is where it can actually come to an abrupt end. So you have to be very, very careful and mindful that you are taking care of the regulatory hurdles and compliance issues when it comes to any kind of project you are taking up in your career. The next one is, of course, what are the resources you will need to accelerate your career? So here are the four to five resources. The first is, of course, Biotechnica is one big resource, biggest resource for you. So professional organizations and societies, you can become a member of it. The second is you can, uh, you know, uh, look at uh, industry specific job boards that is Biotechnica, obviously, and career centers. And you can go for online training and certification programs, workshops, conferences, and various mentorship programs. And of course, participate in various networking events and online forums. So that's where this is, these all things will help you, you know, accelerate your biotech career. But now coming to the last part, which is conclusion, is whatever I told you today in this mind map, this is not the only thing which you need to do. You have to make your own path. You have to make sure and you have to tell yourself that there is always light at the end of the tunnel. Even if your uh, career is not accelerating, you should not accept it. The first important thing is if you accept that, okay, this is it and my career will never grow, then done, you will never grow. But the, the, the day you decide that, no, I'm not going to accept. Instead, you say, I'm going to really fight and I'm going to make sure that I grow in my career. That is where really you will grow. So these were some pointers which I wanted to highlight. I know you might have some questions or comments. Put them down in the comment section or if you have any personal question, you can drop me at drop me an email at shekhar at biotechnica.org. I'll see you soon in the next video. Till then, keep shining, keep rocking. Remember, no cloud can mask your efforts because you are the sun who is going to be persistently working towards your goal. Hustle forward. I'm with you. All the best.